introductions real quick. Um, thanks everyone for joining. My name is Dina Micliazzo. Um, I'm on the social committee. Um, today we're going to be doing a succulent garden tutorial by Dino and Alicia Micliazzo, also known as mom and dad to me. Um, my parents are succulent experts who kind of took on succulent as an extra activity after the retirement and the backyard has continued to grow. Um, my mom is a retired chef, um, owned her own catering business and restaurant, and she came from two people that absolutely love gardening and took it on as she got older. And my dad Dino, he is a retired dairyman and now um, almond farmer. So in his free time, he's building my mom new flower beds to plant her succulents. So with that, I'm going to give it over to my mom and dad to kind of start today's presentation on succulent gardening. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I um, was getting my glasses on so I could see what I'm doing. I always used to say I was lucky to be in the dairy business because cows were big, but now that we're away from the cows, I have to rely on my glasses more to be able to see what I'm doing. So uh, first of all, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we are really novices when it comes to growing succulents. However, it's something that's gained a lot of popularity across the country. And maybe some of you that are joining us today are succulent growers. And so I would encourage you and invite you with any of your uh, pieces of wisdom and success stories to go ahead and tell us what you're doing uh, that maybe all of us can benefit from. Uh, we've been doing this for about a year now and uh, the one fun part about succulents is they're really, once you get them planted, uh, they require very little maintenance. Uh, they're drought tolerant and uh, they're a little bit sensitive to sun and sensitive to cold, but at the same time, uh, we all, some of us have a greener thumb than others and we have found that being uh, the succulents that we have been able to propagate here uh, for whatever reason have done very well. So we would like to invite any questions or comments, uh, just uh, go ahead and chime in at any time. And uh, we'll go ahead and join, uh, I'll join my wife now and she's gonna talk a little bit about how we got started in the succulent business. And she's the one that's really doing the propagation and uh, I'm gonna turn it over to her, her name is Alicia. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Dina, for getting us started on something so amazing that has brought so much excitement into our lives. Uh, before we started in succulents, my mom will say, Mija, which does, that means daughter, give up planning because you kill everything. But when succulents came on, they're so easy to grow. You just take a little leaf, put it in some water, and then give it some compost, vitamins, and love and care, and they're amazing. This one was sent to us by Dina a year ago. So if I wanted to regrow this one, I would just take a little piece from the bottom and stick it in the dirt, keep it moist, and the roots will take off within probably four to three weeks, and it grows. This one came with us from Minnesota. I put it on my luggage for one of my, one, my middle son's family. They were laughing because how are you going to import succulents from one state to another state? I said, the only trouble that I can get, they're going to make me throw them away. So I'm taking them. And there are so many babies grown on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not. This particular succulent is called a cattle tongue. That would be the common name for it. And it's kind of thick and fat. But at the bottom, if you could see, there's some babies that are actually starting to sprout <clears throat> out from the main plant. So Alicia's going to show how she breaks one of those off. And then we're going to transplant it into some potting soil. And then the breast is just water it and watch it grow. So she's going to remove the baby now and transplant it. See, we got the baby out and it has just a little bit, you can see some of the baby roots coming on the side. The soil that we're using is called, it's a miracle Grow cactus, palm and citrus potting mix. Uh, we were advised by a person that's a professional succulent a grower uh, to use that mix and we have had tremendous success with it. 
And so basically we're using just a very tiny cup. You can use anything. You could use a red solo cup. You could use any container that you have at home. Uh, and the roots are pushed into the soil and then the soil is moistened. One of the most important things to remember when you're doing this is that succulents like all cactus do not like to have wet feet. So you wanna make sure that there's a drainage holes on the bottom. And the advice would be to keep these in a, a moderate temperature once they're transplanted, keep them moist, but not wet. And you'll be amazed at how quickly they take off and start to grow. They'll look just like this. And then all of a sudden, when you go to pull them out, there's roots that have already started and away they go. So again, this is a baby cattle tongue is the name of this one. All right, what do you have next? We on? have this one also came from Minnesota. This particular cactus is called a zebra. It's a hawthorn type of a cactus. And again, Alicia is gonna go ahead and show you how she transplants one of these spades that are growing off the top of the plant. See, I, I just pull them out, cut them up, and then I get my soil. And raise it up a little bit. And then you just put them in there. Okay, you want to talk about maybe some of the decorative rocks that you use? And then what I like to do, we like, I like to put a little bit of rocks in them and they call, just give me a little, and they call the river rocks. And what that does, it keeps the moist a little bit better in your plant and also keeps the plant from shifting to the sides. Mom and Dad, could you, re could you call out the soil you were using again, the name, please? Sure. So it's called miracle Grow Cactus, Palm, and Citrus Potting Mix. This is the bag. You might want to, if you want to snap that to give you an idea. Um, it's a fast draining formula that's made specifically for cactus, palm, and citrus. And then you'll also say right over here on the side, great for succulents. We've had really good luck with this. We've made some of our own compost uh, out of the cow manure and the corral cleanings that we have here at the dairy, but I have found that it's really, really too much, uh, too much nitrogen in it, and it has a tendency to burn the roots of the plant. So we've had a much better success using the potting soil from miracle Grow. The other thing that we like to do, and it's really kind of neat, uh, you can use your phone for this, there's all kinds of different types of succulents out there and you can go anywhere when you're traveling and you'll see succulent gardens. And there's an app that you can download on your phone called Planet and the A is like the at sign that you would use for at alo.com or .net. Uh, it's called Planet and it's a plant identification app that we found to be very useful to identifying plants. So I don't want to sound like I'm that's smart because I'm not, but all these plants that we have here, we've put uh, little name tags in them. And the name tags, you could buy uh, a blank one like this. When I was growing up, we used popsicle stick, uh, sticks. Probably some of you have some of these as well. Or you can get a larger one like this to be, to be able to identify the plants so that when your friends and neighbors come over, oh, that's beautiful. What kind of plant is it? Uh, you could probably uh, just go onto your plant ID app, be able to identify them, put a stick in it, and you'll sound like a genius to your friends and neighbors. So the one advice that the one advice that I was told, uh, we use a permanent marker. Uh, after you put the marker uh, identification on the plant, it's on the stick itself. You can cover it with a piece of uh, tape, transparent tape. And, uh, and the marking will stay a lot longer without fading or running if it happens to get wet. Okay, my other favorite plant is the aloe. This is aloe, it's a, jade. a jade plant. I started this one like six months ago and I have it on my kitchen window. So what I did, I just went and got some from an outside plant. So it's, you just cut it just like that. And then again, you just put it on your little soil. Go. 
And the ones, the ones that you keep them a little bit, you give them more light, they turn different color. And the ones that are protected by the sun, they keep their nice green, beautiful color. And if you see in the center, there are some new growths coming in. And that's like a six months old plant, but I kept it inside the house. The one thing that was useful about the app, uh, it'll tell you the care for the plant, the temperature that it, re that it requires, but also stays healthy. And what we have found is a lot of the succulents in the summertime, particularly here in the central part of California, where it gets really, really hot in the summertime, uh, you have to protect them from the direct sun during the day. They'll take a little bit of sun, maybe in the morning, uh, but then the rest of the day, they need to be protected from the sun, or they will actually discolor like the jade plant that Alicia just showed you some, some pictures of. And so this one here, after it's been transplanted, all we need to do now is just keep the soil moist and within a week or so it, it will reroot and be able to take off. So I thought it was kind of interesting this morning. Uh, I don't know if you can see this or not. These are little leaves and there's, there was a whole bunch of them. These little leaves actually were never put, <laughs> they had broken off the plant and had fallen on our redwood deck the redwood deck every day gets a little bit of sprinkle of water for about five minutes. And it was literally laying on top of the wood. And you can see the little roots that have started at the bottom and the new leaf that started at the top. That's and so cute. So, isn't that amazing? I, you know, it, it really makes you think you're a good gardener when in reality it did it all by itself. But what was, <laughs> was kind of neat is it was all it was doing it was laying on top of moist wood just in this like this and it was enough moisture for it to start to propagate on its own okay so show them the way that i normally would start it so what we what we have found to be somewhat successful is to just take a pot, a pot like this that's got a drain hole in the bottom put potting soil in a very thin layer and then just lay these little leaves on that and every day, just a light dusting of moisture. And before you know it, you'll have a new plant started. And then once they root, you can repot them uh, into anything, a container for the house. Uh, we're going to go outside here in a few minutes. I'll show you how we have repotted a lot of these that have started just simply with a little leaf that we uh, either had shared with a neighbor, with a friend, with an acquaintance. Uh, actually, when we travel, if we happen to run across a succulent plant that we don't have a variety of, somehow a leaf from that will end up in my wife's purse. And the next thing you know is we've got a new variety started at home. So I'm not encouraging anyone to go out and rob your neighbor or the local restaurant. But if you're at the nursery and there happens to be a leaf on the ground, or if you brush across it and what happens to fall off, you put it in your purse, you bring it home, and the next thing you know, you've got a new variety. On my defense, when I first started doing this, I joined a group called the YLI, which is Young Ladies Institute. I'm the youngest person in that group. So they got me started in this. And they go, honey, every time that you walk by a succulent plant, cuttings fall down. Whatever's on the ground is for you to pick up. So I'm just following an advice that it was given to me by a very wise person. So <laughs> that's how I got started in this. So are there any questions so far? If not, we're gonna take a little hike in the backyard. There are some questions in the chat. Um, so will succulents grow on a bal balcony that gets little sunlight? Say that one more time. Will, will yeah, will they grow in a place where there's very little light? Yes, they will. We've got some in the house that received zero uh, direct sunlight, and they seem to do just fine. There's certain varieties that will that will require more sunlight. For instance, we're going to go look outside and look at an ice plant. Uh, that is another type of succulent that actually grows along highways in California that requires very little water, and it's direct sun all the time. Uh, there's other ones that in the summertime, uh, I had a variety right here, and I'm going to grab it, that don't thrive in the summertime, 
but in the winter time they do extremely well. And it's this great big one that kind of looks like an artichoke. And it looks, it actually has a little bit of a sunburned tips right now, even though it's getting a lot of shade during the day. But in the winter time, they absolutely explode. And this color goes from kind of a pale yellow to a very bright green. So yes, the answer to your question is they will grow in the dark, not complete dark, but what I would suggest when you, when you can identify your succulent, you could use an app, it will give you some growing instructions on what would be the most beneficial way to have your plant grow and look healthy. So refer back to the app. And then another an question. Yeah, another one is how often do you need to water them? And could you name that plant you just showed again? So we water ours uh, very, very, very lightly once a day. And when we go outside, I'll show you how we do it. If they're on a they're on a timer and a sprinkler system, it's almost like it's just a very light misting. Uh, if you happen to go to a nursery and look at the succulents and you do the finger test just to check the soil, a lot of times the soil will be almost powdered dry. And I think one reason they do that is they don't want them to grow very fast because they're selling them as a small plant. Here we want them to continue to grow where we can propagate and be able to sit, you know, give them to friends and neighbors. So we, air, we water uh, once a day, early morning. Uh, you could do it also late in the evening, but a very, very light amount of water so that the water, so that the soil that they're in does not become saturated, just it needs to be moist. And could you name the plant that you showed like the, um, it looks like a cabbage to me. Uh, I knew you were going to ask that. I actually have it identified outside. I'm going to turn it over to my wife right now, and she's okay. going to visit with you a minute. I'm going to use my app to be identify that plant. Uh, I do have, uh, and you're going to see those succulents on the outside. The ones that get protected by the, uh, the dust, they don't get enough sun. Their color is really... Uh, beautiful green shiny and the ones that get a lot more sun they're a little bit uh yellowish some of them got burned I haven't I haven't had a chance to clean them out but I I like them the one I like to keep them by the shade and my husband loves to spread them through the whole backyard so every time that we scatter them through the backyard some of them live some of them don't but all that you do, you just keep cutting some cuttings and keep replacing them. And they're, they, I think it's just a good plan to have. So that one was identified with a 45% accuracy called a tree anionium. And when I pulled it up on the app, this is what it looked like. It gave you an idea how the app performs. So the, the, top, the top was actually the photo that I took. And then below that, it gives you with a certain percent of accuracy what the app identified the plant with. And then if you push confirm, it'll tell you exactly what it is. And then you can actually on this app, share your success stories with other growers throughout the world. And they can take pictures of their plants that are the same identification or different. And it's from all over the world. It's really kind of a neat, it's a neat app to be able to share your successes and then at the same time, ask for advice from other people. Could, that you, could you repeat the name of the app and spell it out? Okay, I'm gonna show you actually a picture of it. So the app is called Plant It, can you see that? I added it into the chat. Um, okay, beautiful. And when you click on it. And that's a free app too, because some of the apps, they want you to sign up for a yearly subscription. And I don't think it's worth it because this one does the job very well. It's gonna ask, all you have to do is just touch to identify, you take a picture of it. It will send it uh, to the identification department. And then with a certain percent of accuracy, It'll tell you whether it's that plant or something else. Thank so you. it's really kind of fun. You can do it with any kind of plant. So it's been uh, it's been a learning experience for us as well. Are there any other questions? Um, Dad, could you talk about how you guys protect them during winter? 
Sure. So uh, I would, I'm gonna assume that there's uh, people on video today from all over the United States. Um, in California, a harsh winter where we are, which is in the Central Valley of California, a really harsh freeze for us is 28 degrees above zero. And I know there's areas in the country that that would be a great day in the winter time. Um, we also have heat in the summertime that'll get this summer. We had several days at 115 where we're located. So what we do with our plants in the winter time is we protect them from direct frost by bringing them in close to the house on the outside of our home. There's enough heat radiated from the house to keep them warm or we'll move them into the garage so that they don't freeze. I'm gonna guess that certain areas of the country that have a very, very harsh frost, uh, anything I would say between 20 degrees above zero to below zero freezing probably need to be housed in the garages. I know our son is in Minnesota, his garage is completely insulated. Uh, I would assume that the temperature there is gonna get down to probably close to freezing, but not freezing. So I think that that would probably be a safe, a safe temperature zone for your succulents to get them to winter through and be able to uh, explode again in the summertime. Is there anyone that's on this video that actually has had some experience with their succulents in the wintertime they would like to share with us? Yeah, I store them in the basement and that's been quite helpful. It helps them bloom later once it gets a little warmer in New York. Okay. And have you had good success of propagating yours as well? In the springtime, not in the winter. Okay. And is there any tricks that you're using that are be different from what we've uh, kind of been successful with here at, at home? No, similar to you guys. Yeah. They're really, they're really kind of fun. I mean, you talk about neglecting your plants. You, you can neglect succulents and they're gonna do just fine all by themselves. They're kind of like a foster plant. They really don't need a lot of care. They just kind of get things done on their own. So if, if there's, if, are there any other questions or then we'll take a little walk outside. One more question. Um, what if the succulents are planted in the ground and not in pots for winter time? What do you do then? So what we've done here in the West is we will cover them with a plastic tarp or something, not so close that it's touching the leaves, but it's kind of, what it does is it traps the warm air during the summertime, or excuse me, during the wintertime from the sun that actually heats the ground and that plastic covering will hold that warm air through the nighttime temperatures. And then the same thing happens day after day. Um, I don't have any other advice than covering your plants, just like you would do with water pipes and anything that's sensitive to the cold in the wintertime. Any other questions? I think we're good to go see the garden outside. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna pick up my iPad and I hope I don't make anyone get seasick as I'm walking with it, but we're gonna go into our backyard and look at some of the planters that we have uh, transplanted, uh, some of the succulent uh, starters that we have uh, here at the house. By the way, uh, in California today where we are, it's 90 degrees. And we've had a very, very hot summer, but we're looking forward to winter and hopefully enough rain and enough snow to make it through another summer. So this, I don't know if you can see it or not. The big white plump leaves in the corner are called a ghost plant. And those are the ones that we put, they grow just on the mornings and then you transplant them. The one on the other side here is called an ice plant. It makes a beautiful pink flower all summer long. The one in the middle that's taller is called fingertip. Again, this happened to be an old Coke crate that I put wheels on and just made a planter out of it. The one, little, little tiny ones in the middle is called a spider cactus. And then the more gray ones on the side here, it's called Greens Live Forever. Greens Live Forever. Now, everything that was in that planter box 
where all transplants started with one leaf. And that was done this spring. So you can see how they've exploded from the time they were planted this spring to this fall. Okay, we'll take a walk over here. The next one here is a wheelbarrow. All different varieties of plants in this one. This next wheelbarrow happens to be one that I made in my shop and it was made with lumber off my mom's fence. So it was all redwood and I just uh, made a planter box out of it. The pretty plant here in the corner is called a painted lady. It's one of my favorites. The one that's hanging down here is called an elephant bush. They have a tendency to climb if they have something that'll train them. And this is another elephant bush on this side. And this one right here is the one that looked like a, uh, like a tree with light bulbs around them. When they get enough shade, this is how they open up. And then if you want to get it restarted, you can just go and take one of the blooms from the, from the bottom, you cut it off, put it on the, on, the, on the dirt and it takes off. The other planter box, this happens to be made with uh, reclaimed lumber also. <laughs> the, top, a little bit the top one, uh, this one's only a year old. The top one was started with leaves. It's called uh, fingertips again. One of my favorites is this one down here in the corner. It's called Shrek Ears from the movie Shrek. You can probably get an idea what they look like. Dad, we have a question. Um, do any succulents bloom? I believe like the question's asking like flower. Yes. Okay, let's go over here. I've got some in the front yard that are blooming as we speak. So before I show you this wheelbarrow, my, uh, my wife went over to her sister's place and says, uh, Tia, what are you going to do with that wheelbarrow? And she goes, well, I'm going to take it to the dump. And I said, can we have it? She goes, it's worth nothing. Just throw it away. I'm going to take it to the dump. And so we put it, in the back of our, put it in the back of our truck and we took it home. So when you look at this wheelbarrow, it has one handle, no wheel, Big hole in the bottom, it's perfect for succulents. And this one has some that have, that are blooming as we speak. Showing the uh, J plant, it's on the sun, so it's turned color. So that's the jade that that's getting full sun. You'll notice that the leaves are more pale and yellowish in color. And then I'm going to show you a jade that's in the back, the same plant that gets full um, shade and the difference in the color. Oh, this, this is another succulent here. It's called brain, brains. Doesn't that look a little bit like brains? And obviously these all have a botanical name. I took Latin in high school, but I didn't learn enough to be able to sound intelligent. So I used a common name, this a lot more. It's a lot easier to remember. Okay. And this is, this is our menagerie in the corner. But this is a jade plant 
that gets full shade. And you can see it's much darker in color than the ones that get some sunlight. Again, an elephant plant that wants to grow up a pole. And then there's another wheelbarrow put to use over here. And that one came from our friend. It's really outgrown the planter and I'm trying to decide what to do with it. Are there any questions? Any questions? Um, one question is how do you know if it has outgrown a planter? So it will just stall, it'll stop growing and what we, what we have noticed, for instance, the one that I said that's outgrown the planter, it gets too big for the planter. Uh, I'm assuming that they can be cut back. Uh, but what's, not, what's nice about those is that you can actually take those out and start babies in there and start all, start all over again. So there's a lot of options. You move it to a bigger planter, uh, support it with a, a stake, or just remove it completely and start all over fresh again. So there's there several ways to do it. Dad, could you show how you water the plants? Sure. You didn't show that outside. Okay, so you want to want to visit with them for a minute? I'm just going to get my water. Oh, okay. This this pots that we were talking right from the beginning. What I do, I refill them with several different uh, several different types of uh, plants, and then I give them away for Christmas. That was my new hobby that everybody loved last year. So I would like to continue it for this year too. So what I use is I use this attachment that goes on a hose. I'm sure that any of you that are gardeners or when you visit your gardener nursery, you'll see these. And so what's nice about it, they have an adjustable nozzle on the end and it makes a very, a rain like pattern that's very sensitive and comes softly on the plant because these are really some of them, particularly like the jades and some of the cattle tongue and some with the smaller leaves, if you brush against them, the leaves will fall off. So I have found this to be very, very helpful when it comes to watering by hand. The ones that are on an automatic drip, it's actually not a drip, it's a mister system. It just takes a your regular drip line and then I take what they call a spaghetti line off of that, attached to a sprinkler, and it makes a fine mist pattern over the top of the plants and it just slowly goes down into the soil. So a very, very light watering, uh, not aggressive watering else you'll damage the leaves and the plant itself. As far as fertilizers concerned, we have found that the potting mix is good for the whole year. Uh, some of you probably have used Job's sticks. It's kind of a it's, uh, like a 12, 12, 12 fertilizer, potassium, phosphorus, and nitrogen, uh, they don't require a lot of fertilizer. Uh, so I think over fertilizing and over watering is probably a no-no. The best thing is that if you're gonna do any of that, do it very lightly so that you don't uh, cause the plant to go into shock. The potting mix actually has a slow release fertilizer that's good for several months already mixed in with the compost. Do you know, have you found that the mister um, has this tendency to burn any of any of the succulents if the when the sun gets on it so that's why we do it really early in the morning and really the recommendation is to do it in the evening and mine mine are on timers so i could do it any time that i want to set it so mm -hmm. i think you're exactly right i know for instance we have sago palms in the backyard if they happen to get wet and the sun is out it will discolor the leaves so we have found that if you're going to water succulents overhead, like we do, you want it to be dry by the time the sun comes up. Good question. Thank you. Another question, can you mix succulents with non-succulent plants? I would say yes, as long as both plants are drought tolerant. So you wouldn't want to put a plant that requires a lot of water with a succulent that requires very little water. 
And again, I think the secret to most healthy plants is they want to be watered thoroughly, but they want to drain and they don't want to have wet feet. They want to be able to have a moist growing environment, but not wet. I was going to say something. We have a pot outside that I put a sago palm right in the middle. <coughs> and then we put succulents around. Well, the sago plant does not require very much water. And, you, and it's not growing, it's kind of yellowish because this, the succulents get more water. You can show them that one too you want. Right, so that was a good question. You, you can inter, uh, intermix different types of plants, but as long as they have the same type of growing environment or need the same type of growing environment, I think you'd be real successful. Are there any other questions or any stories people want to share of their succulent gardening experience? My parents say they are indestructible plants, but I have killed every succulent plant my parents have brought <laughs> to me. So I don't think I fit into that category. <laughs> She's not telling the truth. I was up at her house. She, she has a little success. <laughs> she lives in Washington. So I think that uh, it's a little different environment where they get more rain. And I think that succulents will thrive as long as they're not too wet. They like, they like moist, but they don't like wet, if that makes sense. Does anyone have succulents at home that they've had great success with? So if you wanted to get started, another way that I, and, and, and I know that we're probably running out of time, another way that I have found uh, if those of you that are on the video call this morning are participants in Amazon, you'll be able to get a wide variety of plants for very little money on Amazon. And uh, they come in a tray that's probably may have 12 different plants in it. Uh, it would be a good way to get started also. And those of you that are in a very, very cold environment in the wintertime, it might be fun to get started now so they're ready to go outside by springtime. And if you want some free ones, go to Home Depot and do the cleaning service a favor and pick the ones off the ground. <laughs> yes. So remember, remember you're on camera, okay? We went to Monterey with Dina and her, her, her friend and my husband, and I just couldn't help it. It was this huge, beautiful succulent plan by the entrance. And Charles goes, look, Dina, what your mommy's doing. I found a piece on the ground. I just bend over and picked it up. That's all that I did. And I got in <clears throat> trouble for it. It's like bringing in a stray dog. She brings in a plant. So, But to me, I, I, I have to say this. I get a lot of joy of just walking outside in my backyard. And every most of every succulent comes from a story. A place that we went. And I... Luckily found one piece on the ground from Lowe's and our friend says, what are you doing? Uh, from a good friend of us that had passed away from my husband, uh, grandma, that a cousin brought us plants. And I just take a big joy to walk outside in my backyard and see all the greenery. And it kind of makes me feel, yeah, they're not here with us, but mentally they will be with us forever, as long as I keep those plants going. And I try to share them with the family, with some friends. I have a couple of friends that I call and they go, if you're talking about succulents, I gotta go. So I think I have given them too many succulents. So they don't wanna visit with me if the conversation is gonna start, hey, I have a beautiful succulent that needs a home. So it, it could be a good benefit and it could be a downsize too. But thank you everybody for listening. And I hope some of you will have as much fun and joy like we do with our plants. And I wanted to thank everyone today also. And, and, and even more importantly, thank you for your participation in Miles for Migraine. I think uh, migraine awareness, as well as the the, the misunderstandings about the disease itself, we're sure happy to be able to participate and be able to uh, provide an activity that we can all enjoy. Uh, and so hats off to everyone that belongs to this group. I think it's got a very, very worthy cause.
Thank you. Thank you for your efforts. It was lovely. And you're both, you're adorable. And so, and your whole family there. <laughs> yes. I, thought, I was going to ask you how to milk a cow, but that's another, that'll be another uh, video. That'll be another story. <laughs> I, I, I would be happy. I would be happy to uh, bring the hands back to life again and milk a cow. Uh, it's really interesting. It's it, the, the dynamics of cow milking is so different than when we got started in the early '50s. That you would think you're on a different planet today. It's that much different. So, I bet you have great stories. Oh yes. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you for asking us to help today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, before everyone hops off, I added a survey link to the chat. Please fill out. And thank you, mom and dad, for always being willing to participate in Miles for Migraine events, um, also to migraine people, too, so they understand the disease and always appreciate their support um, for raising awareness and also bringing joy to the disease with hosting social events. You're welcome. Happy to help. Well, have a wonderful Sunday, everyone, um, and happy early Halloween. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you.